All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today's video, we're gonna talk all about watering fig trees to prevent problems on your leaves like you see here in front of me. This is a leaf that actually has some yellowing and also browning and could be uh, a number of reasons why this has occurred to your leaves in particular. But if you get the watering right, you can pretty much prevent this from ever happening. And I will argue that watering is gonna change pretty drastically based on the temperatures in your environment in this current moment. And also it's gonna change dramatically based on how healthy your soil is. If you have a really healthy soil, you're gonna need a lot less water. Uh, if your soil is actually unhealthy, that's probably a sign that you've been watering too much. And there's a direct relationship with water in the soil and also the life in the soil, air in the soil, and the quality of your soil, whether it's clay, a sandy loam, if it's well draining, if it's not well draining, uh, if you have mulch on top of your soil, these are all factors that influence how much water exactly we're gonna need. To give you the short and simple answer though, uh, during the summertime when it's really warm out, it's you know in the 80s consistently, higher 80s, 90s, hundreds, these are the times when we need to really increase the water to our fig trees. In particular, it's just so warm that they suck up water so quickly. And the fig in particular is very drought tolerant. In fact, one of the most drought tolerant fruiting plants in the world. But we need to have enough water to keep them obviously happy and healthy. But beyond that, there is a water requirement to keep the fruits on our trees. And that if we don't have enough water, actually, the fruits will fall off the tree. So that's a classic sign uh, of not enough water. And we probably need, on average, in those higher temperatures that I was mentioning, anywhere in the ground, for an in-ground established tree, to a gallon of water a day to five gallons of water a day. I think the sweet spot probably for most people is around two gallons of water every day. Um, in containers, we need a lot less because there's a lot less soil. But we also have to be very careful about watering them more consistently than we do our in-ground fig trees. Typically, we wanna have less water, but more consistently. So not something that's drowning them every few days, but a little bit of water every day or every other day. In containers, we probably wanna have per five gallons of soil, anywhere from a quarter of a gallon to a half a gallon to maybe even a full gallon of soil every single day. I would say probably a gallon's a little too much. I, typically stick with the five gallons of soil, about a half gallon of water, but it largely depends on how established your tree is. And it also depends on how many leaves the tree has. The more leaves, the more water we're gonna need. So there's a balance that has to occur and we have to be able to properly evaluate based on what our tree is telling us, how many gallons or how many ounces of water we should be giving our fig trees. So the classic example and one of the surefire signs you'll see are these leaves here that are telling us really the full story. And so this leaf has that yellowing of the leaves. It also has that browning down there. And this browning usually is a sign that we have something called leaf scorch. And leaf scorch is basically when our fig trees don't have enough water in the soil, they really start to droop downwards and once they droop downwards like that, you don't, if you don't perk them back up with water, the leaves are very susceptible to that heat, that sunlight, and that lack of water. The combination of those three things really starts to destroy the leaves. Um, and once the trees recover, they'll obviously perk back up. And then you'll see if there is damage from that event, too much stress leads to that browning there of the leaves. Uh, this is very different than sunburn, but sunburn shows itself um, when you have a tree that's in a lack of light and you move it to more sunlight. It's also very different than rust, which is also browning of the leaves, but those are in spots, very small spots that can show up in humid climates and almost never show up in dry climates. Um, 
So that's a surefire sign right there that you're not giving your tree enough water. Also, you'll see the fruits fall off the tree, as I mentioned, not enough water. You'll also see the yellowing here, but this yellowing usually, and what's more likely for you guys out there, is your tree's not healthy, your soil's not healthy, um, and you have too much water in the soil and a lack of air in the soil, which leads to this yellowing here, and usually a rejection of some of the lower leaves. The lower leaves that fall off usually leads to, or is a sign of, I should say, overwatering. Figs have very uh, fibrous root systems that stay on the surface of the soil, the top 12 inches of the soil typically. And these fibrous roots, because they're so thin, are susceptible to root rot more than other species of fruit trees. They're actually a desert plant. They're, you can think of them as a cactus. Uh, they're supposed to be in the Mediterranean where it's dry. And so for us in humid places where there's excess soil moisture, or if we're growing them in containers, and we're overwatering them, it's very easy to lead to root rot. And what I would highly recommend for a lot of us in these humid places is to amend your soil. This is critical because this can very easily impact how much we water and how healthy our trees are. If we have a well-draining soil, you're gonna have more air in the soil typically, even if you overwater it. And air is going to have more beneficial microbes in higher quantities that lead to a healthier soil. The healthier our soil is, the healthier our trees are as well. When we water, we're almost in a way decreasing the air temporarily. Um, and if it becomes too saturated too often, that leads to root rot. There's a lack of air, anaerobic conditions, leading to the proliferation of a fungal disease called root rot. Once we get the root rot, this happens way more frequently, and it happens typically on less established fig trees, fig trees in containers, and fig trees in very heavy, not well-draining soil. So there's a lot of factors here to consider when watering our figs. Again, those are the quantities, but how do I water all of these potted figs here, guys? I have so many containers, or how would I even water fig trees in the ground, it can become a, a full-time job just watering all these figs. And the simple answer actually is just to use irrigation. This is like a cheat code for anyone trying to grow anything in a container or anybody who wants to grow food in a garden. Whatever you're doing, having a container um, irrigation line or an irrigation line in general is key. That right there is a timer that's hooked up to my irrigation lines. I have two lines there, one on the, the far end and then the, the near end. They water two different zones and each zone gets watered by a specific amount that I set the timer to. It goes on at a specific time of the day and it waters exactly the, the amount of water that I want to give my trees. I can figure out by looking at the irrigation line and then also, by the way, not only looking at the irrigation line, but seeing the spot spitters I have that come from the irrigation line, I know exactly how much water is emitted from these spot spitters per hour. So I can figure out, based on the amount of time, uh, the amount of duration I water my trees, and based on these emitters, I know mathematically how much water I'm giving my fig trees every day. And I can easily tweak that. And so this becomes a very simple problem that I don't really have to think about. Once we get trees that are happy and healthy and it's consistently moist, uh, moist in the soil, we don't really have any problems. We can focus on other things. We can focus on getting our form set up, getting good production. And this is just a problem that I think a lot of people struggle with when they're first growing figs or first growing plants that you just have to get over you just have to learn and getting a green thumb is that key and as I said in all the things I mentioned so far in this video if you listen to some of the things I said that's going to get you that really green thumb to be able to know exactly how much water that's right for you I gave you some of the guidelines it's a good place to start but we need to focus on getting that good soil that good soil life to then have a healthy plant 
and then focus on that water. Um, so it's soil first, then it's water, then we can worry about the other stuff like fertilizer and you know uh, sunlight and form and production. Um, and so I thank you guys here for watching this one. Hit that subscribe button for me guys. Hit that like button. Check out the blog figboss.com. We'll see you for the next video. Take care.